Hi, today I will be discussing about a novel called Surfacing, which is written by Margaret Atwood. She is a Canadian author. This is her, one of her very famous works. So Surfacing is actually a psychological thriller written by Margaret Atwood. It was published in 1972 in Canada. And uh, it is a post-colonial novel and it has a feministic tone. So setting time for this novel is 1970s, obviously, because it is uh, published in 1972, as I told you. And the place is like, you know, a remote island in Quebec, Canada. The protagonist of this novel is the narrator herself, who remains completely anonymous throughout the novel. Her name is not mentioned anywhere. Every time, you know, she is, it is her voice only that is talking. We'll be discussing, analyzing the novel. So, she actually returns to Quebec after so many years in search of her father who is missing. Now, she has not come alone on this island. She has come with her boyfriend whose name is Joe and two other friends who is a married couple. Uh, their names are David and Anna. Okay, so all four of them have come. She also meets a person called Paul. Paul is her uh, father's friend and uh, she wants to seek some information from him about her missing father. Then there is another character called Evans, a local guide who takes the narrator and her friends to her father's island. Somebody has to guide, right? Friend is there, but somebody, local person is needed to guide. So that's the thing. After looking around for the clues, there she is convinced that her father has gone insane, but he's still alive. She searches in his cabin and all that stuff. On, on that island, she searches for him and she comes to him. She decides that, okay, he's alive, but he's insane. Definitely, he's missing. Then her, like, you know, her friend, David, she, he proposes that, hey, why can't we stay here for a week at least, you know, it can't be done in a day. So we can explore and we can find out something about your father. So they all decide to stay back. And uh, actually this girl is uh, the protagonist. She is very worried, like, you know, uh, because she believes that her father has gone insane and any time he can just come and, you know, madman coming suddenly up, reappearing and, you know, creating a <laughs> scene. So she is scared. But still she says, okay, and, uh, you know, we will stay. Meanwhile, what happens is she observes that David is constantly teasing, teasing and humiliating and insulting his wife, Anna. And uh, he quickly disguises this as jokes. This is one of the narcissistic character, right? Like, you know, you constantly irritate somebody or joke. I mean, uh, you know. Uh, you insult somebody, put down somebody and then say, oh, I was just joking. I didn't say anything. That's a typical behavior. Okay. So she observes. Though they are friends, only when you start staying for some time, you come to know who is who. Otherwise, uh, everybody is a good friend when you meet for just half an hour or one hour. Everybody puts on their best face and comes forward. Right. So that is what happens here. Now, Anna further confides that her husband is actually... Like, you know, he is not faithful to her. He's a womanizer and he goes around with any beautiful lady around. That's what she says. And also she says, he insists that Anna should be always putting on the makeup and always she should be presentable and she should put on the makeup, about which Anna is not un not comfortable. That's what she tells to the narrator. All of them, they go on a blueberry picking, uh, picking expedition when they are on, the, on that island. Now, at that time, Joe proposes to the narrator, hey, come on, like, let's get married. I am interested in marrying you. But she declines it and reveals that actually she is a married woman and she has moved away from her husband and child. Now, back on the island, what happens is Paul arrives with an American by name, Malmstrom, and uh, he says uh, he is from a Detroit wildlife agency and who is interested in purchasing the island. But narrator pulls the Paul aside and says, who told you to get? She only would have asked him to go and get a guy and be wanting to sell the island. She says, no, 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 no. My father is still alive. He's just gone insane and he's going to come. Paul is baffled. He's confused. Oh my God, what, what to do now? After the visitor leaves, David is another character who always is 
putting the blame on the others and accusing her. He accuses this Malam Strong that, oh, he must be a CIA operative who is organizing an American invasion on Canada. We'll discuss why such a conversation is coming later when we analyze it. Now I'm just telling the story. Those who are not read will not be able to relate otherwise. So meanwhile, the narrator looks through her father's records and his diaries and scribbles and notepads and everything, consequently believes that he is uh, likely dead. Then she sees that uh, her father had been searching for some Indian wall paintings and uh, because they were marked, he had a map. On that mar map, he had marked so many places like, you know, she says, no, 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 this is something very interesting. I have to decide, I have to visit this place to explore more. So she persuades her friends and all of them, they decide to visit this site. Now, the narrator proceeds to the camping site and then what happens, you know, uh, to see the, uh, I mean, camping site to see those wall paintings which she mentions na, about her father. On their way to the campsite, they see a decomposing blue heron that has been hanged on a tree, some random activity. David insists on filming that dead heron. Now, again, there is a connection here why he is wanting to do. It means at the cost of some dead animal also, he wants to become famous. He wants to make a film out of that. Anyway, for a movie that he is making, which he calls as Random Sample, that is his uh, work, like what he is. Comfort. Now, Heron's death constantly haunts the narrator, the protagonist. And she sees evidence of two campers entering the area before Hannah. And she quickly assumes that they are Americans and puts the blame, like, you know, uh, they have to be blamed for this crime. The four companions set up camp and Anna tells the narrator that she had forgotten her makeup. Oh my God, now my husband is going to punish me. David is not going to like me and I'm without makeup and he will punish me. Then uh, what happens is narrator goes fishing with David and Joe. Again, they encounter an American and the narrator notices an American fa uh, flag on his boat. Now the narrator, you know, brings her companions to a site from her father's map. But there are no wall paintings. She is so frustrated. All of them are frustrated rather. Then all of them, you know, after a tiring day, they return to the camp. On the way, they again encounter the American camp. Now, this narrator is surprised and uh, to see that uh, they are actually Canadians. They are not Americans. But what she had thought as an American flag was actually a sticker okay so every everything what uh, storyline has a reason i will talk about however narrator you know she claims that this has to be an american act because their slaughter of the heron is distinctly an american action that is what she says when they are back in cabin the narrator locates another site on her father's map and But she realizes that the government has raised the water level in that part of the lake. Then she says, no, I have to find out. Maybe I'll get some clue about my father over there. Then she decides to dive to see the paint. Outside, the narrator observed David tormenting Anna. You know, like when she, she is about to take a plunge and go and she observes David is tormenting Anna. He is insisting that she, Anna has to take her clothes off and stand naked uh, in front of his camera because he wants to shoot a film, random samples. And uh, Anna eventually relents, but she feels very humiliated, you know. When the narrator questions David why he tortures constantly, why he inserts Anna, he is quick to say, no, 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 no. You know, I do that to my wife because she cheats on me. That is what he says. Then. The narrator canoes to the site uh, of, uh, from her father's map. She dives repeatedly in search of the paintings. Okay, On a deep dive, she sees a very disturbing image, you know, disturbing object and starts screaming and say, swims to the surface. That is uh, why the uh, novel is named as surface. She comes to the surface. It has a very deep uh, psychological connection also. It's not this easy. We'll discuss that further. 
So Joe follows her onto the lake and wants to know why she is do screaming, what happened to her, and to, you know what, what is happening. She ignores Joe and realizes that what she saw was her dead child, and what she saw was dead child. And then she says, uh, you know, like uh, she actually later on we come to know she keeps on changing her uh, narration and changing her storyline. So that we'll come to know that shows the mentality of the protagonist. Okay, he believes that dead child to be her own aborted baby. she changes her story from leaving her husband and child to having affair with her art teacher and being forced to abort the baby when she had conceived accident this is what story she comes with earlier jo proposes let's get married she denies no 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 i'm not going to get married i am a married woman and i have abandoned my child and husband this is the story she has now there is a twist now she says no 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 actually i am not married but you know i had an affair with my art teacher and accidentally i conceived and uh, that art teacher forced me to abort my baby that's what she says and uh, her vision throws her into a kind of psychosis completely she goes insane and crazy she believes that her father had found sacred indian sites and resolves to thank gods for granting her that power and all that stuff jo tries to speak to the narrator but she remains impenetrable she doesn't want to listen she has built an iron wall around her you know that kind of a thing she tries to he tries to actually force himself on her looking at her condition to bring her back to sanity but uh, you know he leaves her alone once she wants that if he comes closer she will get pregnant and then again repercussions will be there then he just leaves her like you know she is still in that uh, madness and frame of later david tries to seduce the narrator david is as i told you he is another cousin of right so telling her that anyway jo is having affair with anna they are sleeping together so i mean he doesn't feel guilty about what he is now uh, going to do but anna doesn't agree to that and she resists his advance then meanwhile a police boat comes to the island and david tells that narrate uh, tells narrator that police have found her father's body a missing father's body which confirms the death of her father then she goes completely insane and deep in her madness the narrator refuses refuses to believe david she says and that night she on her own calls jo and seduces him so that she can get pregnant she feels that the new child will replace her lost baby she somehow convinces him and does that jo falsely believes that okay narrator has forgiven his foolish act you know for cheating on her so that is how the story progresses in this video actually i'll be talking about the story and then next video i'll do analysis otherwise it will become very long so now anyway on the last day what happens is on the last day the narrator abandons her friends destroys uh, david's film whatever he had taken the shots and everything and escapes in a canoe she is totally lost her mental balance her companions search for her in vain and eventually they leave the island what they can do and all alone on the island the narrator goes completely insane she destroys the art from her job she is actually a freelance illustrator i'll be talking about it when realize the thing and she destroys everything in the cabin whatever her father has kept after all these people leave then she becomes like an animal you know that animosity comes in she runs around naked and she eats all unwashed plants and she starts living in a burrow instead of her cabin on the free island then she hallucinates and imagines that okay when my baby comes i am going to you know grow it outdoors and i am not going to teach any language can't animals live without any language so my baby will live without any language so she envisions her parents also so eventually what happens is after this phase of complete madness hunger and exhaustion bring her back to sanity then she looks at herself in the mirror and says oh my god i'm just a natural woman i can't afford to behave like this she resolves not to feel powerless anymore meanwhile paul arrives on the island with joe 
and uh, the narrator realizes that she loves joe and decides to reunite with him and she pauses in her cabin and looking out for joe waiting this is where the story ends so this is actually i'll be making part 2 for this where i'll be discussing the you know everything like why it is written how it is written the analysis of it. so this is very interesting actually when i was uh, doing my ma english literature i had uh, studied this novel but that time the understanding is not so much na when you are you, as i say, always keep on telling good literature you have to keep read and reread and you know every time you read something new will uh, come to your mind you will understand it better time it was just to focus so many novels we had to study and so many genres of literature we had to study and i studied and i answered the papers but uh, recently again i read during covid times i read and again recently i read last month i read this novel so i said i felt like uh, sharing the information with you all so i hope you enjoyed this watch out for the continuation of this uh, analysis thing and if you like the video please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, hit on the bell icon and uh, to get regular notification and also share it with like minded people i don't expect anything out of it i'm just doing it to share my thank you so much.